Can I get to the word of God? Ah, yeah. Raising family and business altars. We've already, we've already been talking in the last four sessions on uh, describing altars, characteristics of altars, what an altar can do and what an altar cannot do, how to access. We have talked extensively on uh, this matter, this subject of altars. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Let me start from there. It says, return to the ancient paths. Thus said the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths or for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. The Lord says, look for the ancient paths. How did the ancients do it? Look, return to the ancient paths and you will find rest for your souls. Return, ask about the ancient paths. Altars are ancient paths. What are they? The ancient paths. They're the way the ancients interacted with the spiritual world. And people understand. People of power are people who understand altars. People of power are people? People of power are people who understand altars. People of influence are people who understand altars. You will find rest for your souls. But you said we will not walk in it. Now, the ancient paths are altars are an example of the ancient path. Anybody used by God in the Bible, there was an altar behind them. Abraham made an altar for the Lord. Is that okay? Isaac made an altar for the Lord. Jacob made an altar for the Lord. Noah, the, the man of God was standing here on uh, Friday and uh, said, the first thing that Noah did when he got out of the ark was to do what? Good morning. What is the first thing Noah did when he got out of the ark? He made an altar. You know, you would think they have been living in a cruise ship for how long? Hello? You see, that, that's another thing. Noah was in that ark for two years. It was not 40 days and 40 nights. That's how long it rained. It rained for? 40 days and 40. But inside the ark, Noah was there for how long? For two years. You didn't know this. Noah was inside the ark for two. I, I'm not teaching about that, so I don't want to be uh, uh, digressed. Genesis 8:20. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar so the first thing noah did when he got out of the ark was to do what to build an altar the ancient people understood that you build your altar before you build your house it is your altar who, who that will determine where your house is gonna be so here you build your altar before you build, you get your spiritual backing. You get your spiritual shelter before you get your natural shelter. So here. Now, the people we think are educated and they don't need spiritual things, they understand this. Because we, I normally hear people say, oh, China, they make roads. They make what? They are not prayer people. They don't pray. You are mistaken. China has over almost 200 gods. Chinese people pray more than Christians. Are you aware? 
Chinese people are more into altar than Christians. The people who are shaking and influencing the world, they understand altars. They understand. If you go to an Indian shop, you will find in a special place in that shop, there's an altar. Chinese are the same. Muslims are the same. Muislamu kuna maali, wanainta maali pa maombi. They make an altar by putting a mkeka. This thing, they carry it everywhere. Everywhere they go, the first thing they do is look for where can I put an altar. Ntaomba wapi. And they find a nice place, they put. They've even done it at the airport. If they can't find a corner, wanachukua tu, I saw, where was I? Wanachukua tu in the middle of a restaurant. Wakaweka yokitu, what waka. And everybody, nobody was bothering them. They made that place their shrine. Now where we kianza to, the security will come. You know, we don't like too much of, uh, you know, this is a secular place. Have you realized this thing of secular is only told to Christians? When they mean this is a secular place, they mean we don't like Christian prayer. But they don't say this to a Muslim. They don't say this to an Indian. They don't say this to China. It's only Christians. When they mean, when they talk about religious institutions must regulate themselves. They don't mean religious institutions. What do they mean? Christians. It is Christians they have an issue with. It is not religion. Because at those other altars, they, they walk together. But it is Christianity that is a separate altar. That is a different altar. That is fighting those other altars. So they have issues with it. So here. So the Chinese, the Muslims, the Indians, they understand ancient paths. Christians, they are too modernized for these things. Jesus has died. He resurrected. Me, I worship God anywhere. Any time I want, I can worship God. This is true. But you can only worship God anywhere because you are a walking altar. Your soul is what? It's an altar. Your heart has been made into an altar. That's why your body is what? A temple. Say, my body is a temple. What makes a temple a temple? The altar. So you can worship God. God lives in you. God visits you. You are filled with the Holy Spirit because inside you there's what? Daniyako kunanini? Madabau. So you can worship God because you are a, a mobile altar. But that doesn't negate the necessity of a physical altar somewhere where you meet God. The person who made you into an altar, who made you into a temple, who is Jesus Christ, that one, he also made you a priest. The one who made you an altar also made you into what? So the fact that you are an altar doesn't negate the fact that you are a priest. A priest serves at another altar. Do you understand? So in your function as a temple, you have an altar inside you. But in your function as a priest, you must serve at an altar. So I've been made into a priest. And I've been made into a king. The throne of God is an altar. That's why there's a lamb there slain from the foundation of the earth. They say, in the middle of the throne, I saw a lamb standing as slain as from the foundation of the earth. So God sits on an altar. They're here. In front of him is another altar where your prayers come. In the book of Revelation, it says there's an altar in front of the throne of God. The prayers of, of the saints come there as incense.
Are you listening to me? The cross of Jesus Christ was where the ex- altars are places of exchange. So the cross of Jesus is an altar because at the cross of Jesus, God exchanged our sin and put on him and gave, him our, gave us his righteousness. There was an exchange that took place. The biggest altar on earth is the cross of Jesus Christ. Say here. We have talked about this. Now, Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. I want to keep, I want to try and keep this very short. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. One, let's read together. One, two, three. Okay, quiet. You're reading like you're fasting. Let's go together. One, two, three. Okay, let's stop there for a while. It says, you, when you want to pray, don't pray in open places. It's not bad to pray in open places, but the word open place means common. It doesn't mean it it can be seen. It means a common place. It means, Jesus is saying, designate a place where your father will meet you. Designate an altar where your father will meet you. When you want to pray, go there. Cover it, shut the door, and meet your father there. Because your father, God, Jesus gives you the location of God. He's in that secret place. So when you designate a place inside your house, where you meet God regularly, that place becomes an open portal for you. You will discover when you have a place where you meet God regularly, when you go there, the presence of God is already there waiting for you. God keeps time. God does what? He keeps time. I was asking the Lord last night as I was meditating on this. How do I let the people know that it is necessary to have a place where they meet God in their house. A designated place. Then the Lord took me back to what I taught on Thursday. I taught on Thursday about the part influencing the whole. The part influences. For example, when you tithe, when you give your 10% of your money, because that money has been sanctified by an altar, the one remaining, the one you didn't give, is also sanctified. Is that okay? And, uh, and I thought, this is how they also, the wicked people pull your money. Have you gone to like a Muslim shop or an Indian shop when you're giving your money like this, when a chukwa from your hand? But when they're put, giving you change, when I kwa meza. Have you seen that? Why do they have to take it from your hand? Because in the spirit you have to give. If that place where there is a shrine and they understand the shrine, the legal requirement in the spirit is that you must offer personally. So if they take it from your hand, they can go to the altar and claim I was given. He gave me this. And if he gave me this, he offered me if he offered this at this altar, then I have a right to claim the remaining because if the tenth is if the tithe is only, the rest is also holy. Does it make sense? If I take it from your hand and I have an altar, I can go to the altar and say, Altar, who you mutu ame offer ye. Ameni patia ye mwenyewe. Siku mwekea gun, ame jitoa kule, ame jileta, ameni patia, he has offered at this altar. Now, by spiritual law, I claim the rest of the money where this came from. So whatever happens to this little one, this little amount also happens to the whole amount. Do you understand? That's why if you spend money in one bar and they, they understand that bar is a shrine, you'll keep going there. Wana kushika na iyo. Okay. So the same principle, if you have a place in your house that is dedicated to God, <clears throat> then the whole house is dedicated to God. The part affects the whole. If you want to dedicate your entire house to God and everything that belongs to you to God, take a small part, say, God, this, is, this, this, thing is, this place is for you only. Watoto wa watacheza hapa, sita kujanga hapa na simu, hapa nipa, 
Nipako, I've dedicated this place to you. People who have altars in their house, evil altars, have a room which nobody else goes in there. Watu wanafuga majini. Majini ufugwa kwa maolta. Good morning. Watu wanafuga majini uzifuga wapi? Kwa alta. Na hiyo the, the, the common thing about people when you anafuga majini, they always have a room. Inaitwanga dark room, si ni kweli? Na kuna mtu anaingianga huko ndani except them when they are going to offer. Is that true? And the other people in the house, they think, ah, sisi atuingiange huko, sisi atutaki hizo, hizo ni za mzee. They don't affect us and we don't affect them. You are wrong. Even though you are not affecting them, they affect you. Because if he has dedicated that room to those majini, that entire house now belongs to the majini, including everything inside. If somebody can do this with majini, you can even do more with God. Am I talking? You can dedicate a place. The same way they dedicated to Majin. I said, this place I have given to God. I will be meeting God here every day. And because of this, God now takes over the entire house. Jesus said, if you want to pray... Don't go to any other, any common place. Choose a, a secret. A secret place means a hallowed place. A dedicated place where I meet God. And where God meets me. Your father is everywhere, but he doesn't manifest everywhere. He will manifest for you in, in the secret place. Are you listening? My secret place is in my heart. It is true. But your secret place also, Jesus said, go there. It means take a step, walk, move physically, go. Am I talking? He says, and your father, who sees in secret, it doesn't mean, secret doesn't mean nobody else knows, no. It means who sees what you have done in that secret place. Whatever you have done in the secret place will now be, up, will be rewarded openly. Am I making sense? Okay, next verse. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Verse 8. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. So you're going to the secret place is not to ask things. It's to fellowship with the Father. Because once you have set up the secret place, the altar, it is the duty of the altar to do certain things. You don't need to ask God. The presence of that altar, will. there are certain things that altar will do by virtue of being an altar. So say, don't go there and start making a list. The altar knows what to do. It's an altar. There are things that altars do. Altar will be, say altar will alter. Altars always alter. Is that okay? If it's a real altar, it will do what? It will alter. There are people when they come here, they say, I was feeling pain in my back, but when I stepped here, I got healed. What happened? The altar altered. The altar knows how to be an altar. You can't tell altar now you become altar. It knows how to be an altar. Your job is to give God, to give your father ample time, ample opportunity for fellowship. You're for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. So let's see what the altar will do. Next verse. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our father in heaven. I have come here to do what? To hallow your name. Next verse. So this is what is expected to happen where? At the altar of your house. Your will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. In other words, when you enter that secret place, the altar will scan you. If there's something in your life that does not conform to the will of God for your life, the altar will fight it, will remove it. Is that okay? Yeah. The presence of God at the altar will subtract that thing, will, will enforce the will of God in your life. Give us this day our daily bread. The altar will make sure. The altar will make sure what? You have bread. It is the duty of the altar to provide food. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 13. It says, um, is it verse 13? It says, don't, do you, don't, you, don't you know that those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar. So if there's an altar you're serving, you cannot be starving because the altar cannot miss food. The altar always must have bread. So when you go to the altar, say, I need bread today. Why? Because the altar must have? If it's a real altar, it must have what? Bread. That's why God made the, the, the example of the tabernacle. And he says, one of the parts of the tabernacle is the altar of showbread. Because every altar must have what? Bread. Nanyama. Uh, you're moving forward. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, kama altar ni altar ya ukweli, lazima kwa na mkate pale. You cannot have an altar in your house and you like something to eat. It is the duty of the altar to bring it. Watu wa majini wanaenda wana sacrifice ya majini ni duty ya majini kwenda pale kuleta pesa. Is that true? It is the majini that has to go look for money and bring and sustain this family. And you shall set the showbread on the table before me always. Because the altar must always have bread. So when you go to the altar you ask the altar, give me today my daily bread. Because the altar is expected to have bread. Another thing the altar will do is to cancel your debts. It says, forgive us our debts. The altar will do supernatural debt cancellation. It will begin to pay your bills. Man. You'll begin to do what? Jesus said, when you go into your secret place, begin to demand for these things. Because the secret place is supposed to release these things into your life. Next verse. I'm moving quickly because I want to finish on time. Do not lead us in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. What will the altar do? The altar will stand and fight for you against any evil coming your way. I remember I taught you, I think two weeks ago, that if you place two opposing altars side by side, there will be warfare. Second Corinthians thing, chapter, chapter 9 says, don't you know that those who serve at the altar eat? Don't you know that those who minister the holy things eat of the things of the temple? And those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar. So the altar is supposed to have things for you to partake. Am I talking? The book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 10, it says, we have an altar we eat from that those who serve under the law don't know about this altar. We have an altar that we eat of that those who are under the, who are the Levites don't understand this altar. But when you have an altar in your house, that altar begins to prosper you. The Ark of the Covenant is a mobile altar. Is what? 
So when the Ark of the Covenant was being brought into Jerusalem, Uzziah stretched forth his hand and touched the Ark of the Covenant and God killed him. So David took that Ark into the house of Obed-Edom. I think this is Second Samuel chapter uh, Hebrews 13 10 says, We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat. So though if you are not under Melchizedek, this, this altar, you cannot eat from this altar. But if you are under the priesthood of Melchizedek, you have a right to do what? To eat from the altar those which, uh, from which those under the law cannot eat. <laughs> you will eat great things. You are supposed to eat not from your work, but from your altar. Say, I'm supposed to eat from my altar. That's why the Bible says, let him who was stealing, let him steal no longer, but let him work so that he might have something to give. Because when you give, now your altar is activated. Then now, you can be able to eat from that altar. They're here. So labor is supposed to give you something to give. Giving is supposed to activate your altar so that you eat from the altar. It is the altar that gives you something to eat. So because you are a priest, you have served at the altar. You go as a king into the marketplace. When you are a king at the marketplace, the altar backs you up. You find people are buying your things like crazy. Okay. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse thirteen. Whew. Listen, the altar of God was being taken to Jerusalem. Altar Ikawam to. David got scared and said, no, 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 no. I will not receive the altar of God. I will not receive the Ark of the Covenant. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 6. And when they came to the nation's Nachon, threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the Ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Next verse. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error, and he died there by the ark of God. Next, verse 8. David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. Next verse. David was afraid of the Lord that day. David said, I don't want to die you. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not move... <clears throat> the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. But David took it aside into the house of who? Obed Edom, the Gittite. The Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed Edom. How long? Okay, let's read together. One, two, three. Then what happened? Uh -huh. It took three months because of the presence of the ark of God for the Lord blessed or they obeyed Edom, not just obeyed Edom and all his household. Because the obeyed Edom was now serving at the altar of God, the blessing of God came upon him and upon his household. Next verse. Okay, one, two, three. Why? Obed Edom was not blessed before. When the ark entered his house, the Bible says, the Lord has blessed Obed Edom and all his household. The other version says, and everything that he has. So whatever was found inside that house became blessed. He had the fattest chicken. Is that okay? 
he had the fattest cows. Even the rats were enjoying the blessing of the ark of the Lord. Any fly that entered the house of Obededom came out blessed. Am I talking? Obededom was not even a Christian, but the altar was working for him. He was not even a Jew. He was not part of the covenant of God. But because he was serving the ark of God, the blessing came upon that house. In fact, it was told David. So in three months, the blessing of God that came upon the house of Obed-Edom became, it was so much, it was, uh, it was national news. Ujama hakuwa Jerusalem. Kitambo news if a king. Yani your blessing ilikuja in, in, in ilikuwa dhorubakali. Until everybody could see, one, the state of this man financially has changed. And everybody connected the blessing that has now come upon this man to what? The, the altar, the ark of the covenant. Yani the blessing was so much it became rumors in the whole country. Mbaka kafikia David. Then David akafanya mathematic. David alifanya nini? He did the math. He said, if this ark can bless this man this much, uh, Zembuse, the whole city, the city of David. So he brought the ark to the city of David and made it a city altar. He not only made it a city altar, he made it a national altar. The altar of the house protects the house. The altar of your heart is for you, your body. The altar of your heart will protect your body against diseases, your body against attacks, your mind against whatever. You understand? But the altar of your heart will not protect your house. Your house needs its own altar to protect it. Every house that belongs to you needs an altar. Your body is a house. Is that true? Is your body a house? Is the house of God? Kuna altar pale. Is your heart? Is that okay? Your physical house. Lazimu weke maali. Yenyeni? Altar. Yenyeni protect the whole. So that the principle of Obed Edom can begin to work for you. The altar will bring you daily bread. The altar will pay your debt. Sasa ukipata bill. Si we wakwanza kusoma unapelekea mwenye nyumba. Ukipata electricity bill kabla usome? Pelekea mwenye atalipa. Ni we unalipa? Dodge these bills. Duck the thing. Akikuja mbe, hey, hey, bill yako yamekamu. Ningapi, sija soma, kwa soma kwanza, siwezi fungua mail ya wenyewe. I don't want to open other people's mail. Simi siangali simu ya wenyewe. Hii ni your message. Simu yako inalia. She? Shika. So, bill yako ndiyo hiyo. Your bill has come. The owner of the house, please. Your bill has come. These children you are protecting. They have sent their school fees. Nyoyo. Hawa watoto ulichukua ni wako. Fizi yao ndiyo? It is time to step up to what you said you would do. I'm teaching you how to operate like a spirit. Leave it there for two days. Then come and start looking at it. Then sit there and say, okay, I, I've come. This is what, Nini, what, what have you decided? You said, you go to so, 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 so. I've instructed him to give you. Okay. You go. <laughs> give me. Am I talking? <clears throat> ne, uh, is it? Nehemiah. I think it's Nehemiah. Was threatened by the king. And they sent him a letter. He didn't read it. They said Nehemiah took the letter and went and spread it before the Lord, the owner of this, the mail. And Nehemiah said, they have written this thing, but it is not me they are talking to. It is you. It's not Nehemiah, it's Ezekiah. Ezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Ezekiah went up to the house of the Lord. He didn't have a house altar. And this letter was not about his house. It was about the Israelites. So he went to the altar of Israel. And spread it before the Lord. 
Nehemiah alisoma hii mail aka realize mail yangu hii. I cannot be stressed about this. The owner of the mail is here. Why should I be stressed about other people? Other people's crisis. Bible says Nehemiah became a messenger. Akabeba hiyo mail, akapelekea mwenyewe. He went and spread it before the Lord. Next verse. This is where we get point of contact service. Eh? And Hezekiah, not Nehemiah, Hezekiah keeps saying Nehemiah. Then Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O oh Lord, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim. Do you know what the cherubims are protecting? The altar. The one who dwells between, you are God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Next verse. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God. The Hezekiah did not say, look at what Sennacherib is telling me. Hezekiah said, these words, Sennacherib has sent them so that they can reproach you. Hezekiah lielewa, he si mail yangu. He mail ni metumiwa. Niyako. Sasa mi nimekuletea mail yako, fungua macho usome, fungua masikio, usikie. Alafu niambia nifanya nini. Next verse. Truly Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands. Next verse. And have cast their gods into the fire. For they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they destroyed them. Next verse. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I pray, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord God, you alone. Next verse. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, because you have prayed to me against an Akarib king of Assyria, I have heard. Mungu alisema hii mail yangu umeleta nimesikia. Nimesoma. Akapewa instructions aseme. Nasema huyo na huyo king mwenye ameandika hizo vitu nitaweka huku kwa mapua yake. Nitamvuta kwa huku aende kwake na akufie huko kwake. The battle was not between Hezekiah and these people. Hezekiah alielewa hii ni vita ya madhabahu. It is you stressing about things that should be stressed by altars. Ile biashara yako weka altar pale. Is that okay? Weka nini? Asubuhi kabla ufungue, mwambie sasa nimekuja, mimi ni servant hapa. Wewe Mungu wa hii madhabahu fanya mambo. Hii ni biashara ya yako. Mimi nakutumikia tu. I don't fight battle of this ministry. It's not mine. It's not Nilichukuanga kitambo nikampea Mungu. Nikiona stress mahali naambia Mungu chenye wanasema ni kweli wanaweza kunishinda wanaweza kunipiga na hizi mambo yote lakini hii si kazi yangu. Sasa wakinipiga we utabaki wapi? Mimi nakutumikianga tu. Mimi mimi I'm, 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 I'm just a worthless servant here. This uh, mimi ni punda tu. Mwenye kazi ni wewe. Na sasa ni kazi wanapiga si mimi. Ni kazi wanapiga si mimi 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 ni punda tu hapa na nasemanga chenye unaniambia nafanyanga chenye unaniambia sasa wanapiga wana kazi saidia kazi ndio hiyo kazi yako then i sleep it's not my thing that's why it's not called freda kama ministries it's not mine it's not mine it has no, it doesn't have my name on it say here It's not mine. Chukua nipea mwenyewe email yake. Sama hii ndio hii ndio feedback mimi nimepata kwa hii kazi yako. Fanya venye unata? Unataka. Daya dingo daza. Make that business the Lord's business. Make that house the Lord's house. Make those children the Lord's children. Are you struggling with fees? Make the children 
Do you know you have a promise? God will teach your children. The Bible says your children shall be taught. What does that mean? Mungu atapeleka shule. Si kweli? Mungu alisemanga mimi nitapeleka watoto wako shule. I will teach them. So me and say God <laughs> it is uh, time imefunguliwa. Hawa watoto wako ulisema <laughs> utawafundisha <laughs> wameitisha nini? Fees. Yeah. All your children shall be taught and they shall be given peace. So kwenye kwenye shule wa kwenye wako hakutakuwa na pandemonium huko. Ah you guys. It is you who is struggling to teach your own because you don't understand. Mwenye alter mwenye hao watoto alisema atawafundisha. Sasa wewe umechukua responsibility yake. Ndio umebeba mzigo huwezi. Mwe alikupima aliona huwezi. Kasema mimi nitawafundisha. Wewe ukasa ukajipiga kifua unasema unaweza. Sasa umeshindwa. Pass those things to the owner. Say here. Say understand. So it doesn't have to be a special Okay, make your ndio ikukumbushe hii ni altar, make it like an altar. Ndio endange pale. Funga hiyo place mzuri ndio isiyo ni mbali ukitoka watoto wanachezea pia kwa sababu presence of God is there. Give it the due dignity. Ni sawa? Ndio ukiwa na barua ukipata barua unaendanga unaacha pale. Ukiwa stress sana unamwandikia Mungu barua unampelekea hapo. Mungu nimekuandikia hiyo nitakuja on Wednesday. Kuchukua nini? Majibu yangu. You are the one who runs this house. Yule jamaa kiku stress sana anakuja amelewa nini unamsikia tu ako yani hakuji after six months. I know a couple. The man comes home twice a year. Twice a year. The rest of the year, na vile umekula malenge, it is running through the blood. Mtu ufanya nini? You have eaten pumpkin. It is inside the blood. Hata you, cannot, you cannot sit still. You go to all the time, all the time. Jamaa maenda? Six months. <laughs> Na muona tu kwa, kwa status. <laughs> How will you survive? Sasa andikia mungu history yote. Enda weke pale kwa madhaba. Andika, dear the, 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 uh, my father, the one who is in secret, I am sending this letter to P.O. Box secret place. Huu jamaa ananitesa. Ulisema if you burn with the last we should marry. I was burning with the last. I married. I am still burning with the last. What is the issue? Aija <laughs> aija solve. Mwenye nilewa anamuona tu status. Leta hii jamaa hapa. Lead me not into Tempt- si the Bible said, eh. Mungu atamtafuta atamtoa kwa status. Eh, the following you kutagonga say, I've been fired. <laughs> As a car, car for six months. After six months, God will give you another job. Let us finish other business first of altar. La duma zapayada. Azikulete. Sama usinilete. I have altar. I can call you anytime I want. Najua altar uitananga. Eh? Najua yu? Ujui lakini wewe uimbanga. My altar is calling. 
na hauna water yenye naita anything <laughs> naimba tu <laughs> imbanga ikiwa umetengeneza kaota kanaita mtu <laughs> make sure anyway my sermon is finished so from now <laughs> I want you to leave here and go and make an altar. Is that okay? Yeah. And then you just sanctify. The, the word to sanctify means to hallow. To hallow means to make holy. The, the easiest way of sanctifying an altar is to put, put, put uh, sanctify it with anointing oil. Eh? Let a end of the virgin green. Ile olive oil. Huh? Extra virgin. So let a your extra virgin oil. Sawa. <laughs> Sawa. Eh. Minta ombea. Is that okay? Ordinary. Ile ordinary to see ile metoka, metoka Israel. It's, you don't have to do gymnastics about it. Let's bring the ordinary one. Because God says whatever is sanctified with oil becomes holy. And you sanctify all tayaku. Na ye back is sanctified. Is that okay? Let me tell you, when you have an altar, you, your prayer life will increase because your altar will be calling you to prayer. Hiyo altar kwa hiyo nyumba itakoi kikitishanga, unaangalia Netflix, unasikia Netflix imekutoka. Unasikia, unasikia inaanza kubabo tu, ratarabu, ravrizo, badale. What's what's happening? I just feel like praying. What's happening? The altar is calling. It is time to go serve the altar. The altar is calling for prayer. Hata hiyo movie sasa hata ileti. It is not bringing Eh, unasikia sauti yangu. Fire is on your side. Glory is on your side. Ah! Nenda na call to na kaa na kuwa na quiet time. God begins to speak to you. Is that okay? Sometimes before you quarrel, Mungu na kuwa kam. There's a there's something in your heart that is coming. Mungu na ito. Because when you place two altars side by side, one altar of God and another altar of Dagon. The altar of God will beat down the altar of Dagon. So you must have an altar that fights Dagon. Is that okay? Anything that has come inside. Kuna watu anakuja, they say they want to discuss business meeting, they want to meet at your home, mkule nyama pamoja, muonge biashara, kumbe amekuja na... They are not coming to partner with you. They are coming to collect yours. Sasa lazima huwe na protection altar yako. It can sense Dagon. Now it fights it. Is that okay? Because sometimes you are too spiritually blind. You are too trusting. Where is the fight mwenyewe? So you must have an altar that's Ukilala, overnight, unamuka kesho, unapata dego na meanguka waki, jaribu tena, unamukata kichwa, cha, cha, cha. You walk free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.